It is time to move on to the next topic, which is Lab 10 accessing NFS storage. So fasten your seat belts and let's start the ride. Hello world, this is Nick from NLB and today we are moving on to the next topic of the VMware 6.5 series which is accessing NFS storage. For the purpose of this video I'm going to use my virtual environment which contains my domain controller DC01 which I'm going to use for authentication. Uh, I'm going to use my storage server in here which I'm going to host the um, iSCSI storage disks and I'm going to configure the NFS share on and I'm going to use my two ESXi hosts alongside with my uh, vCenter server to configure the uh, new data stores and present them to my ESXi hosts. So for the first part of the video we are going to concentrate on configuring the NFS storage, uh, the NFS share and I'm going to use Windows Server uh, so I can configure the uh, the share on. Of course this can be configured on a uh, Linux machine as well but uh, as I'm more familiar with and comfortable with uh, Microsoft products I'm going to make the share in here. So uh, the thing that you will need to enable first so you will have the option to create NFS shares is the NFS uh, server role which uh, is under the uh, file and storage services. So if you expand the file and storage services, expand the uh, file and iSCSI services, you will see right here that I've already enabled the server for NFS which will allow me and will grant me the right to create NFS shares. So um, after I have the role enabled, I'm just going to uh, the file and storage services under server manager, shares and uh, under tasks, I'm going to create the new share. I'm not going to use the uh, advanced share because I haven't enabled the uh, server resource manager. Instead, I'm just going to use the quick method to create a fast share so we can map to our uh, ESXi hosts later. I'm going to select the volume that I want this share to be on and we are going to make the share name which is going to be NFS data store. You can see right here that automatically you will see the local path and the remote paths to the share and I'm going to click next. So on the next tab I will um, have to warn you that it's really important for you to protect uh, your shares in general so unauthorized access and no authentication no server authentication is really not the best option but um, what I've uh, noticed is uh, if I do not select the allow unmapped user access by uh, UID or GWT I'm not able to present the share in my preparation for the video. I've uh, noticed that. So uh, if there is a NFS share guru in here, you can uh, provide me a bit more information on what is the best option to, to proceed. But what I did instead is I've configured the uh, share permissions so that uh, only my two hosts will have read and write access and what I did is I performed a test where I've removed the shared access for one of the hosts and I'm not able to attach the share to it so let's say that I think it's a good security measure but what I really think it's good is to browse through the internet and be sure when you configure shares so you don't end up with a uh, person just connecting to your environment and accessing your share. So the first host that I'm going to add is my iSCSI VM kernel port on my uh, host 1 and I'm going to allow read and write access and click add and I'm going to map my second host which is going to be 3 and read and write access. So if I click next and just leave the uh, other permissions default and click create I will have uh, my NFS share under my C partition in shares the NFS data store. 
Another important thing protecting the NFS share would be if you go to the properties and under the NFS sharing tab, manage NFS sharing, you'll see the same options but uh, in a, presented in a different way. And if you click on permissions, you'll see the two um, hosts that I've added with read write access. And for all machines, the um, default access is no access. So this should stay in here. So uh, it's I think it's going to protect you. But uh, yeah, if there is an, an expert in, in sharing NFS storage, leave a comment and we can improve in the future. Now that we have our NFS share, I'm going to switch to my vCenter server and in the uh, storage tab, I'll be able to at least try and uh, add the uh, new storage, the new data store that we've configured. So if I click on new data store and click next, select the NFS data store and next and this window is important and uh, depending on what uh, version you select there are different features that uh, can be enabled so I encourage you to search uh, what is the difference but overall the NFS version 3 will serve you better in a bigger environment and um, one important thing really really important uh, that I need to highlight is that uh, when you configure NFS store to be connected to multiple hosts, uh, do not mount the NFS store with different versions. So if you select option uh, the NFS tree, that needs to be the option for all hosts connected to this NFS storage. If you mix it up, you will end up with uh, data corruption. And this is noted in here as well. So I'm going to leave the NFS tree and click next. Under the data store, I will just change the default name to NFS data store 01. And for folder name, I will just add NFS data store. Okay. For server, I'm going to specify my IP address of my server, which is one and click next. On the next window, I will be presented with the option to mount the NFS store to my two hosts, which I'm going to click next. And this is the ready to complete window where I will click finish and let's see if uh, this will be a successful mount of the data store. Yep, uh, it looks good for now. So you can see right here that I have the NFS data store 01. And if I go to my hosts, let's see if the two hosts can see the actual data store. So ESXi host 01 can see the data store and ESXi host 02 can see the data store as well. So now that I have the storage enabled, what I can do is I can try to migrate a virtual machine storage files and see if this is going to be successful. So I have a virtual machine called uh, NLBPC01, which is at the moment powered off. So I'm going to try and migrate the storage files for this virtual machine. I know that they are not big and see if that would be successful. So, um, if I select the NFS data store 01, I will see that the compatibility checks succeeded, which is good. I'm going to leave the uh, disk format team provision because I don't have enough storage to make it a tick provisioned and keep the, the other defaults as well. So, if I click finish, my virtual machine should start migrating to my NFS data store. And let's see if this is going to be successful in the end. So after uh, the first attempt, it failed on me because there was an uh, insufficient disk space on my uh, server. And after cleaning some files, I've <laughs> I'm left with one gigabyte of free space on my storage server, which is not good at all. But um, in order for me to test it, uh, yeah, I'll have to go and push the limits. So straight away, you can see that um, 
my on the second attempt my virtual machine was completely uh, reallocated to the uh, NFS data store although it appeared an alert saying that there is uh, a low disk space on, on this data store I'm just going to push it even further and I really don't recommend for you if you have a data store or a server in general with uh, so low disk space I really don't recommend to try and powering on anything but as this is in test environment only I'm just going to start at least try to start the virtual machine and see where we go with it uh, I can see that uh, my vCenter is detecting that the virtual machine has successfully powered on and let's see if I'll be able to no. Maybe see from here. No, of course not. Okay, so we have successfully um, powered on for now. It's possible that uh, all the environment can go. Yeah, yeah, it's really not a good thing to see that, but. Uh, yeah, as this is a test environment, I'm just going to push the limits and see <laughs> how further we can go with that. So, uh, yeah, I can see that my virtual machine is running off of my NFS data store. And at least for now, it's trying to boot up normally. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it so I can see that it's going to fully load. Yeah, there it is. And I'm just going to shut it down before we completely, um, before my environment completely, completely stops working. So uh, I can confirm that uh, using the NFS share, um, I'm able to start a virtual machine and uh, it, it is going to work the way it is uh, working on a local share connected to the SXI or a nice SCSI share, for example. So uh, this was a good example to see how this is done and um, I'm just going to migrate the virtual machine back onto the data store so I can free the space but I'm going to leave the NFS connected to um, my two ESXi hosts so we can use it in the future for uh, smaller things. So now that I've moved back the virtual machine to my data store, I uh, now have uh, again reclaimed the free, the free space. And uh, an important lesson was learned. And this is do not, do not, do not use the operating system and to storing anything uh, other related than the operating system itself. It's really going to make things worse if you try to host databases on, on a, an operating disk or if you try to create a NFS share on the operating disk. So what I really recommend is you to create another partition and store everything in there uh, or create different partitions for the different uh, different purposes. So now if I go ahead and refresh the capacity information, my data store 01 is uh, nearing the uh, at the capacity limit, which is around uh, yeah, it, it it dropped below uh, six gigabytes of free space. But nevertheless, this is not going to make any problems. I'm just going to move anything to my data store 02, so we can free up uh, more disk space. But in general, this is how you configure NFS um, on a Windows server and how you provide access to your ESXi host to this NFS share. We've uh, moved a, a single virtual machine uh, on it so we can confirm that it's fully accessible and working. We've migrated uh, information to it and from it and everything seems to be working fine. So uh, if you like the video you can always hit the like button and subscribe to NLB Solutions and click on the bell icon to receive notifications for new videos. I'm going to continue with uh, the next topic from the uh, um, VMware uh, 6.5 course and the next topic is going to be uh, templates and clones and um, yeah this was Nick from NLB Solutions thank you very much for viewing see you in the next lab